The mountains of Wyoming, a landscape once home to the black-footed ferret, thousands of them once ranged over 13 states, from North Dakota to Texas. This is one of the world's rarest furred animals, but as far as we humans are concerned, it's back from the dead. In the 1970s, it appeared the black-footed ferret had become extinct. The prairie dog, the only food the ferrets can eat, was being exterminated by deliberate poisoning and by the destruction of its habitat by modern farming methods. Shortage of food took its toll. Where once there were ferrets, there remained only ferret holes. Fortunately, that isn't the end of the story. In September 1981, a Wyoming farmer's dog killed a black-footed ferret. A month later, one was seen alive. Then in November 1981, a second one was spotted. By July 1983, scientists reckoned there were more than 100 living black-footed ferrets. A program was launched to safeguard these few remaining specimens in the wild. Scientists also started a captive breeding program. In Meetsitsi, Wyoming, where the farmer's dog rediscovered ferrets back in 1981, they became a tourist attraction. That year was perhaps a new dawn for the black-footed ferret. The population went from strength to strength. But early in 1985, it became clear that it was too early to celebrate. An outbreak of sylvatic plague was killing the prairie dogs, and the ferrets were running short of food. Then came a new blow. The ferrets fell victim to canine distemper. Dozens died. Is the box ready? The scientists decided the only way to ensure the survival of this fragile species was to take the few remaining healthy ferrets into captivity and breed them. None would be released into the wild until the population was big enough. That would mean at least 500. The captured ferrets were taken to a wildlife research unit to spend six weeks getting used to their new environment before the start of the 1986 breeding season. After a slow start, the scientists' patience was rewarded. The birth of seven young ferrets brought their number to 24. One man who thinks saving the ferret is worth the thousands of dollars it's costing is Dr. Nathan Flesness, an eminent biologist and conservationist. All right. There are about 400 Rembrandts. Um, and they're worth a lot because there's only 400 of them. Um, what, are, what is one of the 24 ferrets? black-footed ferrets are one of the 23 or 24 California condors worth uh, compared to 400 Rembrandts. Um, they are part of our heritage. Um, they're, they are a natural part of the world. They've been here for millions of years. They uh, have the right to continue to be. Um, and it's a pretty crass view to say that we should pass on a world with our descendants that's missing all of these wonderful things we started with. It must be a bore to be a star but that's what this very special baby is. These pictures were shot late in 1986. The young ferrets must be adults by now. If the breeding program continues to be a success, the ferrets will one day be released into the wild. Then they'll have a lot to learn, like how to stalk and catch their prey without getting attacked themselves. Dr. Ulysses Seal helps run the breeding program. It's been my experience that most predators take to killing prey rather readily. The problem may be to them to learn how dangerous their prey can be. At any rate, it'll be many years before we'll witness scenes like this again. With the threats of disease and destruction of their environment, the wild is regarded as too dangerous a place for the remaining black-footed ferrets. There are other worries too. For instance, with only 24 ferrets to breed from, most of whom are related, what can be their long-term chances of survival? Inbreeding is a real danger. We'd be delighted if some new black-footed ferrets could be found in the wild at other locations because it would greatly enhance the gene pool for the species. And this is extraordinarily important for their long-term survival. However, given the amount of time and effort that's already been expended, more than a million dollars, and I don't know how many thousands of hours searching, 
We don't believe we can count on that, and so we have to place our stakes on what we have. The odds aren't good, but while there's a chance of success, the conservationists must take it. Without the work of the scientists at Seville, black-footed ferrets will never again roam the hillsides and prairies that were once their home, and scenes like these would never be seen again.